I know a lot of you watching this video are feeling incredibly stuck in your lives. You have these incredible goals, dreams and aspirations to build a successful practice, but you just don't know how to accomplish them. Now, if that is you, I need you to listen very, very, very closely to the rest of this video, because in this video, I'm going to show you a powerful method to beat procrastination once and for all by resetting your thought patterns. But before we dive in, let's clear up a common misunderstanding. It's not just a lack of energy or know-how that's holding you back from achieving your goals. The real game changer, it's your mindset. You see, most people go through life on autopilot, thinking the same thoughts day after day, yet expecting different outcomes. Einstein hit the nail on the head when he said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Who am I to tell you this? My name is Edward. I am 23 years old and three years ago I launched my first business. With zero background in entrepreneurship, I still managed to hit six figures in just a year, all while completing my bachelor's degree. How? By using a powerful method to reshape my mindset for success, the SMART method. You'll learn all about it in the video. See, when you shift how you think, when you break free from your usual thought patterns, learning the skills you need to build your practice suddenly becomes a whole lot simpler. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to beat procrastination for good. Think about your typical day. You wake up, get out of bed the same way as yesterday. Use the same finger to turn off the alarm. You follow your usual morning routine, shower and groom as always. Have coffee from your favorite mug and drive the same route to work. There, you see the same patients and do the same tasks. Then, you rush home, check your emails and go to bed, ready to repeat it all the next day. But here's something to consider. Did anything in your brain change during that day? You're thinking the same thoughts, doing the same things, feeling the same emotions, and yet you might be expecting something in your life to change. See, if you keep thinking and acting in the same ways, you're just going to create more of the same life. You're in a loop, not allowing anything new to happen. That's exactly what Joe Dispenza's work evidences in his book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. We have about 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day, and most are repeats from the day before. But it also means we have the power to change by adopting new thoughts and breaking old habits. And that's exactly what you can do to reprogram your brain for success and build a thriving private practice in no time. See, to change our thought patterns and transform our lives, it's important to think beyond your current environment, and you achieve this by creating a vision. Every great person in history knew this, whether it was William Wallace, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, or Joan of Arc. They couldn't see it, they couldn't smell it, they couldn't taste it, they couldn't feel it. But it was alive in their minds. It was so alive in their minds that they began to live as if that reality was actually happening. That's exactly what I used to create my business. Since I was a kid, I knew I would be an entrepreneur. And when I was 10, I read Michael A. Singer's book, The Surrender Experiment. It's about a man who lived in the woods all the while building a multi-million dollar business. He did not achieve this incredible success by pushing hard, but through meditation and visual Visualization by letting things naturally happen. I was struck by how powerful our mindset can be in creating our reality. So I started creating a vision board. It was a real board where I stuck pictures of all the people I wanted to meet and things I wanted to achieve. Every day I would look at my board and visualize myself in those situations and places, not for long, just five minutes every day. It was a constant reminder of where I wanted to get to. One of the people on my board was Sam Ovens, a well-known serial entrepreneur, and 10 years later he became my business coach. This is where the power of visualization can take you. It can rewire your brain to make you achieve what you thought was impossible. See, having a big vision of where you want to go is essential. It's like an anchor, a place you can return to and recharge when facing difficulties. It's what drives you forward. But having a clear vision alone isn't enough, especially when you're feeling stuck, sitting at your computer, trying to build a website or launching your first Google ad. Don't worry, there are practical steps you can take to outsmart your brain and tackle these tasks without procrastinating. Let's start by understanding what goes on in your brain when facing difficult situations.
Contrary to popular belief, procrastination isn't about lacking motivation. It's actually about having plenty of motivation but not acting on it. Procrastination is frustrating because you want to do something but can't start. This is due to a conflict between two modes in our brain. First, the engage mode, driven by dopamine. This mode motivates us through pleasure and rewards, urging us to take action. Second, the avoidance mode. Influenced by cortisol, it makes us hesitant because of fear and anxiety leading to inaction. For therapists, this conflict arises when facing challenging tasks like starting a Google Ads campaign. Initially, the idea of attracting more clients is exciting, but when you sit down to work on it, doubts and worries flood in, making you hesitant and unsure where to start. Two types of resistance usually emerge. Negative emotions. These are like a child's tantrum. See, when a young child can't play because it's time for homework, they might resist or complain. Similarly, when you find tasks like creating marketing materials stressful, it might trigger a similar internal resistance, creating inner chaos. The ego's reaction. If you pride yourself on your therapy skills but are new to marketing, the pressure to create a successful ad campaign can be daunting. Any difficulty can feel like it's undermining your professional competence, prompting you to procrastinate to protect your self-esteem. These reaction patterns are natural. Your brain is reacting to protect you from potential dangers. Recognizing them is the first step to break through the inaction vicious circle you're stuck in. And now I'll teach you how to trick your brain to overcome them. Negative emotions often arise when we see a task as too big or intimidating. You know your end goal, but the path to actually get there seems murky. It's like completing a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle without knowing what the final picture looks like. This uncertainty is naturally triggering resistance. Here's how you can overcome it. The solution is to take a little bit of time to figure out the true scope of the work. This will rarely be perfect, but aim for as much clarity as you can. Ask questions like, what needs to be done? Why does it need to be done? By gaining clarity on the how and why of the task, you are making it easier to start and stay engaged. This keeps your brain from wondering what's the first step. It can be, for example, one, open your laptop, two, navigate to a Google Ads tutorial, three, open Google Ads and create a new account, four, explore the dashboard to familiarize yourself with the layout, five, draft a basic outline for your first ad campaign. Make the first action so easy, requiring so little energy, that there's nothing left for the brain to resist. When you map out these wildly clear goals, execution starts to feel as smooth as a knife through melted butter. You can slide right into doing it. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, the more time you give yourself to do something, the harder it seems to get? This phenomenon is called the Parkinson's Law. It states that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. In other words, if you allocate a lot of time to a task, even if it's not very complex, the task can start to feel more stressful and daunting, like dealing with taxes or building your website. Setting tighter deadlines makes tasks more manageable and less overwhelming. Remember the last minute essays you wrote as a student? The same principle applies. when. Starting a task, allocate a specific amount of time, cut out distractions, and just dive in. Remember, it's better done than perfect. In his book, The Power of Habit, Charles Duhigg introduces the concept of the habit loop, a powerful framework that explains how habits are formed and maintained. The habit loop consists of three key components. Q, this is a trigger that signals your brain to start a behavior. It could be anything from a time of day, a particular location, an emotional state, or the company of certain people. Routine, this is the behavior or action you perform in response to the cue. Reward, this is the benefit or pleasure you gain from performing the routine. An everyday example of this is stress eating. When you feel stressed, the cue, you might automatically reach for chocolate, the routine, because it makes you feel better, the reward. Over time, this becomes a habit. And here is how you can use the habit loop to train your brain to crave for challenging tasks. Let's say your goal is to integrate Google Ads into your marketing strategy, Q. Choose a consistent time each day, like 10 a.m., dedicated to working on Google Ads, routine. At 10 a.m., start working for an hour or two on Google Ads tasks, such as researching keywords, creating ad copy, or analyzing campaign performance. Reward. Reward yourself with something enjoyable, like a short break, a favorite snack, or a delicious coffee. Before you even know it, what once felt like a mountain to climb becomes just another part of your daily rhythm, as natural and easy as breathing.
Maxwell Maltz in Psycho-Cybernetics reveals a game-changing idea. Our actions mirror our self-image. Basically, we act according to how we see ourselves. But these beliefs don't determine the action itself. For example, whether I believe I can run a five-minute mile or not, the physical action of running remains the same. What changes is my mindset. If my ego doubts my ability, it creates resistance due to a fear of not meeting that expectation. This mental barrier is what makes the task seem more difficult, not the running itself. Here is how you can trick your ego to change your inner narrative. Alex Lowe, a renowned climber, famously said, the best climber is the one having the most fun. The same principle applies to all aspects of our life, especially when tackling difficult tasks. Instead of obsessing over the perfect outcome, why not find joy in the journey itself? Now, of course, you're probably thinking, what if there's absolutely no way I can imagine this hard thing being fun? What if waking up at 5 a.m., running in the freezing cold to the gym to lift heavy things just can't be fun? Fair enough. There's another trick we can use in our brain. Change the narrative. We all talk to ourselves, but what most people don't realize is that the words we use are very important. There are nuances in language we can use to trick our brain. If I keep thinking, I need to get better at online communication to attract clients, my brain hears, I'm not good enough at it. This negative thought discourages me from trying because my brain wants to avoid the feeling of failure. However, by simply changing my mindset to I am actively improving my online communication, I am starting to see myself as a therapist who's making progress in this area. This positive self-talk encourages actions. This is why language is so important. When I first started my business, I tried a variety of free online trainings, but none of them made a real impact. I realized it was because I wasn't fully committed, but everything changed when I invested all my savings, even borrowed money from my parents to enroll in a $5,000 coaching program. I was now accountable to someone else, a coach who held me responsible for my progress. This wasn't just about the money, it was about being true to my word. Failure wasn't an option. My ego wouldn't allow it. So I held on and continued and eventually made my business thrive. See, getting a coach can really fuel your drive to stick to your goals. A coach doesn't just guide you through the unknowns. They anchor your commitment, giving you that extra push to keep going and reach the success you're aiming for in your therapy practice. These strategies have worked wonders for me, helping me tackle tough situations by reshaping my approach. Give them a try and you might be surprised at how they transform your perspective and boost your ability to handle difficult tasks with ease. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, we've got more for you. In this video, we explain exactly how to add three, five, 10, or even more clients each month to your existing client base. Check out the link to the video here. Looking forward to seeing you in our next video.